Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 41 in my Edexcel IGCSE exam series. This is proof. If you do find this useful, please do like the video and subscribe if you're not already. Let's get into the maths. Let's do it. Okay, so it says prove algebraically that the difference, so difference means subtraction, between the squares of any two consecutive odd numbers. Okay, so let's define first what odd number is. Let's call it um, 2n plus 1. So any even number is 2n, any odd number is 2n plus 1. And we want the squares of these. And then the next number along, because it says two consecutive square num odd numbers, will be 2n plus 3, because obviously 2n plus 2 will be even. So it's 2n plus 3 will be the next number along. And let's do the larger one minus the smaller one to work out the difference. Okay, so all that's left to do now is just to multiply out these brackets. So 2n plus 3, 2n plus 3, minus 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1. This is going to give you 4n squared plus 6n plus 6n plus 9. I'll put that in brackets and then I'll take away and I'll also put this in brackets because I don't want to make this mistake of forgetting to take away all of the terms. 4n squared plus 2n plus 2n and then finally plus 1. Okay, great. Um, I can collect these together, so 6n plus 6n is 12n, and 2n plus 2n is 4n. I can then look along and, um, and do my subtraction, so 4n minus 4n will cancel, 12n minus 4n, 12n minus 4n is 8n, and then we have 9 minus 1 is 8. So we have 8n plus 8. And we need to show that that's a multiple of 8. Well, all I need to do to do that is show that I can take out a factor of 8, which, of course, I can. So we have proved it. And we can write QED at the end just to show off. OK, next question. It says, show that this expands into that. So that's a show that question. For show that questions, what I tend to do is just cover up the answer and then um, use, and then just expand this using algebra. So I'm going to first off expand the first two, and I'm going to get x squared minus x. And then I'm going to expand that by the third bracket, and that's going to give me x cubed plus x squared, minus x squared, and minus x, which is equal to x cubed, these two will cancel, minus x. And then have a look, is it the same as what they've asked it to be? Yes, it is. Great. And now it's asking me to prove that the difference between a whole number and the cube of this number is always a multiple of 6. OK, wow. I mean, that is tricky. But luckily, they've given us a hint in the first question. Because the difference means to subtract a whole number, which is called x, and the cube of that number, which we call x cubed. So this question is actually the same as the first question. And the first question we said was equal to x, x minus 1, x plus 1. And this is, um, this is the product of three consecutive numbers. because we're going to have x minus 1 times the next number along is x 
times by the next number along is x plus 1. And if we have three consecutive numbers, then, I mean, at least one will be even, because you can't have three numbers in a row and none of them even. And also, at least one will be a multiple of three. Again, you can't have three numbers in a row and one of them not be a multiple of three. So therefore, because we have an even and we have a multiple of three times together, that is going to give us overall a multiple of six. So QED, we have a multiple of six because we have an even number times by a multiple of three. Okay, next question, it says prove um, that when, a, when the square of any odd number is divided by four, the remainder is one. Well, the square of any odd number is 2n plus 1 squared. And that will be equal to 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1, which will be 4n squared plus 2n plus 2n plus 1, which is 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. Okay, now how can we show that when it's divided by 4, the remainder is 1? Well, what we could do is we can take out a factor of 4 from the um, first two terms and show that's plus 1. And because of that plus 1, this means that this term here is always a, is always, um, uh, it's 1 more than a multiple of 4 and therefore um, the remainder will be 1 when divided by 4. QED. Okay, next tricky question. We have this um, a sequence, and it says prove algebraically that the sum of any two consecutive terms in the sequence is always a square number. So let's try and um, write this sequence down algebraically. Um, let's call the term number n. Um, so what you can see is that uh, this number here in the sequence is always the same as uh, the term number. So we could call that number n. And this number here is always uh, just 1 more than n. So we're multiplying by 1 more than n, which is n plus 1. And the number on the bottom is always 2. So that's just going to stay constant. And then what we want to do is we want to sum, so add, um, two consecutive terms. So what's the next term in the sequence? Well, it's going to be uh, one more. Each number is one more than the uh, the last one on top. So I'm going to have n plus 1, and I'm going to have n plus 2. And that's all over 2. Okay, well, let's, let's add these together. Luckily, the denominators are the same, so adding them should be straightforward. Um, it's going to be n, n plus 1, plus n plus 1, n plus 2. And at this stage, you could um, expand these brackets on the top, but there is a little shortcut, so I'm going to show you what the shortcut is, and that is factorizing. Um, because this left term here and this right term here, they both have the same factor of n plus 1. So I could write n plus 1 as a factor, and then what do I times the yellow one by? Well, just n. And what do I times the um, blue one by as n plus 2? And that's all over 2. So inside that square bracket, we get um, an n plus an n, so that's 2n plus 2. 
and that's all divided by 2. And we can do a simplifying there because we're dividing by 2 and I can divide this right bracket there by 2 completely. So that will simplify nice and neatly. So I just have n plus 1 times by n plus 1. And that's a square number because that is n plus 1 squared. So we've proved that it will always be a square number. And just for clarity, I know some people find this step a bit tricky because when you divide through by 2, a lot of people say, well, why, can't I why don't I divide both of the, the brackets by 2? Well, let's imagine that you had um, um, 6 times by 2 over 2. And we um, can see that this will be 12 over 2, which is 6. The answer is 6. And you can divide just this one by 2 and cancel that out to get 6. So that works. If I were to divide both the top numbers by six, by 2, then I would get uh, 3 and 1, which would give me 3, which would not be the right answer. Okay, final question is a question 25, so this must be tricky. And it starts off by saying n is a multiple of 5. Well, that's where the tricky part lies, because if n is a multiple of 5, I can rewrite that as 5 times some other number. So I'm going to write it as 5 times k. And now a will become 5k plus 1 and b will become 5k minus 1. And it says prove using algebra that a squared minus b squared is always a multiple of 20. Well a squared will be 5k plus 1 squared and b squared will be 5k minus 1 squared. Okay, expanding these brackets, um, I'm going to do it um, shorthand as quickly as possible. So I'm going to get 5k squared is going to be 25k squared. I'm then going to get a 5k times by a 1, which is 5k. I'm then going to get a 1 times by a 5k, which is a 5k. And then I'm going to get a 1 times a 1, which is a 1. I'm going to put that in brackets, I'm going to put a minus sign there, and I'm going to do the same over here. And here I'm going to get a 5k times 5k is 25k squared. I'm going to get a 5k times by a minus 1, which is minus 5k. And I'm going to get a minus 1 times by a 5k, which is minus 5k. And I'm going to get a minus 1 times a minus 1, which is plus 1. So it's always good to be able to expand uh, square brackets without having to do the uh, actual... Um, writing them out twice. Okay, we can simplify the 2 in the middle. So that was 2 5k's there, so that's 10k. And this is 2 negative 5k's, so that's negative 10k. We can then um, look along and we've got 25k minus 25k, so that cancels. We've got 10k minus minus 10k, so that is 20k. And then finally, we have 1 minus 1, which is just cancel. So overall, we get 20k. And this is clearly a multiple, whoops, a multiple of 20. QED. OK, uh, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video and subscribe if you're not already. That's proof done. Move on to the next topic. I will see you there. Bye for now.